which happens to have taken place during the 75th anniversary year of the Boy Scouts of America is proof that we are alive, well, and living throughout the United States of America. There could be no better example than you to represent what is best in America and what is best for America. The president wanted to be here tonight very much because he feels so strongly about the Boy Scouts. And he asked me to tell you that he knows, as I do, that scouting is more important today than ever before. It all started in 1907 at a campfire held at Brown Sea Island in the British Isles by a man named Lord Baden-Powell. Sparks from this campfire started a flame in America that burns strong today in millions of young and old hearts throughout the nation. Hi, I'm Gordon Jump. You probably know me as the general manager of WKRP in Cincinnati. I'd like you to come to Fort A.P. Hill, Virginia with me, where together we'll experience a history-making event. The 1985 National Scout Jamboree. A celebration of the 75 years of scouting in America. What more appropriate place could you find to celebrate scouting 75th year than right here in such a historical setting as Virginia and Washington, D.C.? As thousands of scouts flowed into Washington, D.C., it was a great opportunity for them to tour the capital and to see firsthand our nation's heritage. From Washington, D.C., it's a short hop to Fort A.P. Hill, Virginia. This beautifully forested, sparsely populated area soon would become the home for 32,000 Boy Scouts and leaders from the United States and 27 countries throughout the world. As you might imagine, it took several years and countless hours to put this all together. Prior to the Scouts' arrival, the Army and 4,000 volunteers were there getting things ready to go. So it takes a lot of planning and a lot of volunteers. The professionals can bring it so far, and then it takes that volunteer to put the cap on it. And we appreciate everything they've done. Finally, the night before the scouts were to arrive, 4,000 tired volunteers and staff members assembled at the large arena for a program and ice cream social in their honor. Well, through the deserts and the valleys, through them dark Chicago alleys, through the muddy Mississippi and the hills of Carolina, through the mountains of Montana and the swamps down in Louisiana. And we're on our way to having the finest jamboree in the history of the Boy Scouts of America. Where else could you find 4,000 adult and youth leaders such as we have here who are willing to pay their money and give of their time anywhere from 10 days to three or four weeks and work 12 to 14 hours a day where in the world would you find that kind of dedication and commitment? Nowhere else but in the Boy Scouts of America.
Even as the celebration began, last-minute construction was still taking place to fortify the gigantic arena stage. It was Monday, July the 22nd, 1985. Very early in the morning, scouts started rolling in. You're going to be around for 10 days. You'd better be well prepared. And they were. There's a lot of people here, a lot more than I expected. And the, the camp is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be this big. Soon, individual camps, sub-camps, and regions began to take shape. This troop from Northville, Michigan brought 38 scouts. We've been planning like about a year and a half to get this thing all together. Uh, some of the boys are uh, uh, 12, 13 years old, and uh, they'll cherish this forever. Here at a jamboree, uh, they're going to see virtually everything that scouting can offer. Even before the camps were set up, serious patch trading began to take place. It's traditional for Boy Scouts to build gateways at the entrance to their camps. There were creative and innovative gates at camps, subcamps, and regions that reflected the lifestyles and flavor of each area. As the evening of July 22nd came to a close, scouts seemed to be settling down and getting adjusted to their new home. Tuesday, July 23rd, was beautiful and clear. From the air, it was impressive to view Virginia's seventh largest city. Fort A.P. Hill came to life as 32,000 scouts and leaders began to move. It was absolutely incredible the variety of scouting activities available for scouts to attend. archery range, scouts could test their skills. Oh, bullseye. Yes. You're going to retrieve your own arrows. Just the one. Straight up. There you go. In the aquatics area, scouts had an opportunity to learn how to snorkel and dive. The buckskin games afforded scouts a chance to learn early frontier games that were played in the 1800s. Have you ever wondered what it's like to have a physical handicap? These scouts found out at the Handicap Awareness Trail. I would like them to become aware of different handicaps 
and then to realize that the handicapped kids are not any different than our other kids. Most of it they really enjoy. A couple of these they find it really hard to do. It's, it's hard work. But uh, I think they're getting the idea of what we're trying to get across. This is kind of fun. I like it. I'll, anytime I see a, next, another handicapped person, I'll have a little bit more appreciation for them and help them out and, and they'll be a little bit kinder to them. Many distinguished guests visited the Jamboree, including Governor Charles Robb of the state of Virginia. The trading posts located throughout the Jamboree offered just about anything a scout could possibly want. The patrol challenge events gave scouts a chance to develop teamwork and compete against other patrols for the best time. How about an A-frame waddle race? Building a bridge without a rope. Or carrying a bucket of water along a rope. This is an obstacle stretcher carrying race. It was fun and a great opportunity to work together as a team. In the National Exhibit area, many exciting displays were open. Scouts immediately began to line up at the Apple computer exhibits. Someone said they were giving out free computer bags. I thought it was great, and it was more than I expected. I didn't think the food would be as good as it was. And... Most scouts would agree the food was excellent, and it took an incredible amount to feed this group. If you figured out by the meal, we have 96,000 meals a day, or before the camp started with all the staff that came in and after, it would be a million meals during this week. This jamboree took on an international flavor as 350 scouts from 27 countries came to join the group. Tuesday night, foreign scout leaders were invited to a special international host dinner. July the 24th started with this unforgettable opening ceremony. We had with us the United States Air Force Band. The Brown Sea Island Group. The fifers and drummers of the Colonial Williamsburg Marching Company. and every one of you to this great national jamboree. Let's begin the jamboree. Color guard, raise the color. Scout salute. It was warm this day, 97 degrees, and the humidity was high. Let's go over to Upper Travis Lake to see what's happening. 
This activity is known as the raft encounter. Scouts love the opportunity to splash and cool off. However, some found the cold water in camp even more inviting. At Travis Lake, crew rowing was available, a first time at a jamboree. This is the first time we've had sliding seat rowing in an organized scout activity. The young boys have been having a lot of fun picking up the skills. They have been doing it very well and are enjoying it very much. Time canoe races were held each day. Some just could not resist accidentally swamping themselves. The confidence course was challenging for everyone. It was designed to boost the confidence of the scouts. Following the Army Band's program at the amphitheater, Paul Carlin, the U.S. Postmaster General, unveiled an exciting new Boy Scout stamp. I'm particularly pleased with the way this one stamp came out because it depicts what scouting is all about. This Israeli scout group sang and visited with scouts throughout the Jamboree. We're enjoying very much and it's very terrific. It's unbelievable. As scouts mingled and traded patches and pins, it was exciting for them to meet and trade with scouts all over the world. There were many fine exhibits to tour, such as this one from NASA. Each day, scouts received the Jamboree Journal, which kept them advised of daily events and happenings. Scouts were responsible for doing all the reporting. But they have met their deadlines consistently every day since the beginning, which is very, very impressive. After the paper comes together, you do all the reporting and, um, and the writing. The satisfaction is... Uh, is kind of seeing your name in print and hearing, you know, the people tell you, well, you did a good job. Incidentally, did you happen to catch this important article in Wednesday's Jamboree Journal? Mobilization for the opening arena program extravaganza started early. Scouts in the western region had to hike nearly three miles to the arena. It was an impressive sight to see this massive group all together in one location. There were thousands of visitors in attendance as well, making a total of approximately 70,000. We welcome the public. This is one of the grand opportunities we have to show what scouting is all about. Here's a short recap of this memorable night.
in a short period of time, you will be hearing from a very special group of entertainers. <laughs> Have fun at this national jamboree. You guys have one of the greatest experiences of your life here. Don't ever, you'll never forget it, because not very many people are fortunate enough to be able to come out here and do what you're doing. And we're real happy to share it with you. This is a song from our, our latest album called The Beach Boys. If everybody in the USA could come with us to California, yeah. Or we could take it to a place out the west to where the good sun shines every day. Now there's a touch of California, yeah. And everyone who's ever been this way. And when your telephone begins to ring and the operator comes on the line, it's California calling. Thursday, July the 25th, started out as usual. It looked a little overcast, but was still bright. This is the Wayfarer course. It provides scouts the opportunity to go cross-country orienteering using only a compass and a map. When we present them the map, they have to actually use the compass to line up the different checkpoints. And instead of just pacing the distance between point A and point B, for example, they have to figure out how to get across a valley or how to cross between trees and then use their compass to get back on the correct path. No. The advanced course was timed and covered many miles. The Heritage Trail offered scouts an opportunity to learn some old and forgotten crafts. This group assembled this cabin in a record 36 seconds. The wind velocity over at the windsurfing area was picking up a little. It was not more than anyone could handle. The main problem was just staying on long enough for the wind to catch your sail. Suddenly, without warning, it hit. Tropical Storm Bob blew into the area with 50 mile an hour winds. We have to relocate because of these rivers. Fortunately, no serious injuries were reported. Only wet scouts, down tents, soaked clothing, and a lot of bent poles. Well, we knew that rain was going to come. Uh, we did not know that it would blow in all at once with a 50 mile an hour wind. Over at the exhibit area, Many scouts maintained their position in the apple bag line despite the storm. As you can see, their spirits were not dampened in the least. The phone lines were busy and parents were anxious to learn how well their sons had survived. Thursday was spent putting things back in order and in the evening, the scouts played the camp-wide game. <laughs> 
The object is to collect all ten of these names. And the sub camp that you're that you're at, you're issued a certain uh, name. And you have to collect the other nine. Uh, different names are Paul, Boyce, Summers, Roosevelt, Be uh, Beard, Phillips, West, Seaton, Livingstone, and Rockwell. Um, I was issued a Baden Paul. I have collected all of them, but Summers, and that seems to be a pretty good one right now. Hey, anybody from Washington? Got you complete set here. Some leaders ate pretty well. This group tonight had a salad bar, baked potatoes, and cordon bleu, along with chocolate eclairs. We have been eating good in this particular camp. We're trying to keep our staff happy, keep the staff happy, the boys are happy. It was Friday, July the 26th. Tents that were organized before were now deteriorating. Thanks to the help given from local cleaners and hotels, all the scouts slept in dry sleeping bags. It was still raining slightly, but visitors still came by the thousands. Scouts located hidden signal centers using directional finders at the electronic pathfinding area. Fox hunt. We found Cheryl Ladd. What? We found Cheryl Ladd. Field sports included excellent shooting education courses, rifle marksmanship. And for those who qualified, shotgun trap shooting. This is a replica of the 1908 Brown Sea Island camp established by Lord Baden-Powell. 22 scouts dressed, talked, and acted out many of the skills and games that the original Brown Sea group learned. James has portrayed the part of Lord Baden-Powell for the last three National Jamborees. It's always a pleasure to work with a group of young men like these. In this particular group, we have some, uh, I think, 20, 22 Eagle Scouts. So the skills are high, the competition is high, and the spirit is high. public as well as the scouts enjoyed the experience of touring Brown Sea Island. The Army put on some great exhibitions for the scouts, like this one on wrestling. Helicopter repelling. And the world famous Golden Knights. Scouts enjoyed getting autographs from these talented men. The weather improved on Friday afternoon and the video crew was able to capture from the Goodyear blimp some unique views of the camp.
Over 100 merit badge displays were available for scouts to see at the Merit Badge Midway. Many scouts worked on their merit badge requirements while at the Jamboree. Each area was staffed by experts. Friday night, each region held a region-wide campfire. There were some great skits. We're doing everything possible to remedy the situation. One more time. Hold on, I got to try. What? Walk, Bubba. What? Kill, Bubba. The Goodyear blimp gave everyone an interesting light show as well. In the East Central region, the world's largest harmonica band made up of hundreds of scouts, put on a great show. It's Saturday, July 27th. As usual, the trading posts and designated patch trading areas were packed Olympic Fun offered the Scouts a great variety of activities to participate in. Have you ever witnessed this type of a race? Try the three-way tug of war. How about Frisbee golf? And spear throwing? You could shot put and even play miniature golf. Pioneering offered a chance to learn some great scouting skills. Each group had to build its own bridge and cross over. This swing built by the boys became a fun-filled attraction for scouts and visitors. On the lake, scouts learned to maneuver their canoes through a variety of obstacles at the canoe slalom event. They also had a chance to participate in the canoe trail of spirit. Numbered buoys helped them navigate around the course. At the K2BSA ham radio exhibit, scouts were busy contacting their homes in different locations throughout the world. Currently, we're taking uh, radiograms from boys back to their homes, and we're operating amateur radio stations, making contacts all over the world. The purpose of the station is to illustrate amateur radio for the scouts who are attending the Jamboree, as well as to make contacts around the world to let other people know that the Jamboree is in progress. There's much more to scouting than just rubbing two sticks together to start a campfire. Welcome to See and Do. Saturday afternoon, each troop presented a scout skill. Game, pioneer project, or cooking and food tasting demonstration to the scouts and visitors. Anything you want. Salmon, breads, uh, cookies, everything up there. You can't you can't miss anything. Those kids are doing a tremendous job. The see and do is really what scouting is all about. It was exciting to see such a great variety of activities and demonstrations. 
We'll take a look at some more on Sunday. At the Saturday night regional campfires, scouts enjoyed several programs put on by patrols from all over the world. Special religious services were held on Sunday for each denomination, reminding all scouts of their duty to God and country. And I believe in it with all my heart. I believe in the motto, the laws, and every part of the scout program. There were chaplains from each denomination represented, including the National Islamic Committee on Scouting. This is the first time that we've had uh, representatives from the Islamic group with us, and the first time that we've had the Buddhist group with us. And they have blended in beautifully with this group, and it has added a dimension to the chaplain service. We're so grateful to have them been tremendous to see the love and the consideration and the helpfulness that these men have shown the scouts. Throughout the nation, there are over 163,000 handicapped scouts involved in scouting. The six-man kangaroo patrol from Clinton Valley Council in Pontiac, Michigan, has two members who have reached the rank of Eagle. I understand this is the first handicap contingency to attend the National Jamboree. There's been mainstreamers, but I think this is the first contingency. And uh, we just hope that we can open it up for the rest of them because it's here for them. It's really beautiful. The best experience with the exception of seeing two of my boys make eagle of anything I've ever did. Sunday afternoon, it was the see and do again. No, it's 20 below zero out here. Say, hey, listen, what do you need to know about winter camping? This Hawaiian troop challenged scouts to climb up a coconut pole. The reward for making it was a Kukui nut souvenir from Hawaii. There was mountain climbing, rappelling, log rolling, and even smoked turkey. I'd recommend that to anybody. This is Chips and Chatter. This group came up with a first aid neckerchief tie. So what you get here is ideas that you can go home and produce in any way that you want to in your own home area. One group had even developed a water balloon catapult system. After bicycle safety instructions, scouts had the opportunity to participate in a bicycle motocross race. On the rainy days, because of the mud, things got a little bit more exciting. American Bicycle Association put on some great bicycle demonstrations.
this is the great raft race. Once again, scouts had an opportunity to compete and keep cool. The exhibits and Merritt Badge Midway was always packed, as was the Lost and Found Center. Green Bar Bill, the author of the current Boy Scout handbook and personal friend of Lord Baden Powell, was on hand and visited with the boys. The thing that's most important in scouting is that every single scout activity must be the best show in town. And speaking of the best show in town, did you ever get over to the fishing lake? Take a look at these three and four pound catfish. Boys were hauling them out all day. Some lucky scouts caught fish that were tagged. Now, these were worth special bonuses. They could clean it, cook it, and even eat it in the specially set up areas. <laughs> Not too great. <laughs> With all the excitement, sometimes volleyball and just plain old frisbee were relaxing ways to spend the evening while a great dinner was in progress. July 30th, 1985. It's the last official day of activities. A special flag ceremony was held. After an 8,500-mile journey to 35 states in the Union, this caravan arrived at the Jamboree with ashes from ceremonial campfires that were held at each state capital in honor of the 75th anniversary of the Boy Scouts of America. Some of the fuel for these fires included many historical items. The ashes were mixed together with ashes from Brown Sea Island and placed in a special container that will be on display at the National Office of the Boy Scouts of America. The Heritage Campfire Caravan reminds us of the bond we share and the brotherhood of scouting in the free world. Trees were given to each council to take home in memory of this tremendous experience. Competition was an enjoyable experience for many. There was always the sweet smell of victory and success. Sometimes, however, the competition was fierce, especially in the tug of war. They're gonna be on the ground. They're not gonna rip them up. They're weak. <laughs> oh, I think we can handle it. Because we have a rhythm and they don't, they just pull. Get ready. In this case, the little guys won, but there was still good sportsmanship on both sides. Conservation is very important to all scouts. In this area, scouts had some hands-on opportunities to learn more about conservation and ways to improve our environment. In the future, like the mistakes that man is making right now, in the future, the Boy Scouts that grow up will correct those mistakes someday. Scouts had an opportunity to meet a bald eagle named Tiger. If you want to see a smile, how about them scouts? They go the extra mile, how about them scouts? They're a bunch of good old young boys. How about them scouts? America's pride and joy, how about them scouts? Yeah, they're tried and true, how about them scouts? They're green, red, white, and blue, how about them scouts? From sea to shining sea, how about them 
them scouts at the National Jamboree. No matter where we went with our cameras, there was always a message for the mothers back home. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. How would you like to be in the middle of this group at the kayak area? Not all of them made it. All areas were shut down and once again scouts were on the move. This time to the large arena for the closing program. Are there any scouts here from Texas and Oklahoma? Hey, everybody, let's get on the floor and dance an old tune. Called Spirits were high, and the excitement could be felt by everyone as scouts and visitors assembled at the large arena. It took on an almost circus type of atmosphere as scouts and leaders anticipated the coming program. recovering from an operation, sent his wife to speak to the group. Nancy Reagan arrived and scouts waited, anticipating her speech. I really want to congratulate all of you on your Diamond Jubilee. By working together, by sharing with each other whatever knowledge or skill you have, you too can begin to change the world. You can do anything. You can make a difference. Please be strong and help fight the influence of drugs. Say no and help others to say no. Sandy McDonald, the president of the Boy Scouts of America, led the boys through the scout oath and law. To do my duty. To do my duty. To God and my country. To God and my country. And to obey the scout law. And to obey the scout law. The Oak Ridge Boys sang a specially designed song for the boys. You say you don't have nothing to do But hang around and get into trouble at home As well as in school When was the last time you went camping Hiking and trampling through the woods Feeling like a champion Check out the Boy Scouts, see what it's all about. You found to find out something better to do with your time. Check out the Boy Scouts, yeah. do it right, do it now. Let's go and show you how to have a good time. The Oak Ridge Boys put on a terrific concert that will long be remembered. A special rededication ceremony was led by Ben Law. It renewed the spirit and commitment to the ideals of scouting. Eleven tons of fireworks lit up the sky 
and the 1985 National Boy Scout Jamboree was brought to a memorable close. been attending jamboree since 1957 and I believe that this is the best jamboree that I've ever participated in uh, the spirit of the young people is absolutely fantastic the rain and the storm we had the other day will simply embellish their memories well scouting fundamentally is a, a peace movement here we have one of the largest cities in, uh, in Virginia right now this is the healthiest city in the world, I would believe. And if we could get people excited about having that kind of a community, then the world would be quite a different place. Scouts can move fast. In a matter of hours, the whole camp completely disappeared. Some lay exhausted as they waited for their buses. It had been quite a week. We briefly asked a few what they liked best about their experiences here. They all had different opinions. There was uh, a lot of new things to learn. Uh, like I learned how to snorkel here, and I've never done that before. Beach Boys, Oak Ridge Boys. A lot of patch trading. Motocross is a lot of fun, and so is the shotgun shooting. Everything. And they're bad to me, Making new friends and trading pins. It's like the best thing I've been at in my life. I like the NASA exhibit myself. You meet a lot of nice people. It's, it's, one, of the, it's one of the best experiences I can have in scouting. The thing that I've enjoyed the most about the Jamboree is how it's made me feel inside. It has renewed, if you will, my um, feelings about scouting itself. It's renewed my feelings about uh, the whole youth movement. And I have seen from all over the world uh, some of the greatest kids I could ever want to want to know. This is Gordon Jones. I think you'll have to agree with me that definitely the spirit lives on. Rise up on wings of eagles and climb to ever greater and greater heights as you joyfully and zestfully serve your fellow man and your nation. Additional copies of this program may be obtained by writing or calling Lon Gibby Productions. <laughs>